Rise up with me, church. We're going to ask the Lord to bless his word. Grab your Bibles. Lord Jesus, we just ask, Lord God, that your powerful word come alive, Lord God, that the power of the Holy Ghost fall on this place, Lord God, right here, right now at Westport, Lord God, right here at North County, Lord God, right here at O'Fallon, South Texas, and all across the country. Let your love be felt. In Jesus' name, his church said amen. Amen. And amen. Applaud the Lord as you're seated. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't at your mama's church. Amen. Hallelujah. So today we'll be speaking from Matthew chapter 25. So go ahead and cue up your Bible if you brought it with you. If not, just grab one out from the chair in front of you uh, and be blessed. So today we're going to be talking about opportunities. This is the month uh, for new beginnings, new joy. Uh, and today it's about new opportunities. Say opportunity. You know, I thought about that word opportunity. I almost feel like a scholar saying it, oppor- opportunity. It just it feels like it just, I'm a, all of a sudden I'm a scholar or a graduate of some place. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. I, I'm glad that the, the Lord has given me a, a doctrine's degree in the Holy Ghost and, uh, and, a, and a degree in common sense. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Uh, so opportunity defined as a, as a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So today God has brought everybody together and set together a, a bunch of circumstances that we can seize an opportunity. Amen? Yeah, you guys really didn't believe that. You know, last night they were excited about that. Where's the amen section at here? Yeah. That's right here. Good. I'll preach to you guys, and the rest of you guys will have to just follow. So opportunity, and uh, it'll be it'll be uh, a time for a promotion. Anybody ready for a promotion? Just raise your hand. Yeah. Applaud the Lord if you are. Amen. Yeah. yeah now we're here. Amen. So uh, praise God. So uh, the message out of Matthew 25 is all about opportunities, and this is, this is Jesus speaking to me and you. Uh, he's speaking to us through what the Bible, is, the Bible calls a parable, and a parable is a, a short little chunk, Reverend McCoskey, where Jesus uses a story to get a point across. Amen? Amen. And I'm glad, Jerry, that Jesus uses stories because I wouldn't be able to understand it if, it was, if I had to gather it in my intellect. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So it's sometimes it's it's um, it, it speaks to me through through these parables as he does his, the rest of his disciples, and and in the first one here we're going to read uh, Matthew twenty five one through thirteen, and he writes this parable about the kingdom of heaven and what it'll be like and uh, and uh, how and why you need to get on board uh, and how you need to seize that opportunity. And I'm not sure who I'm speaking to today about an opportunity. Uh, maybe we always start with being born again. That's the most important. So we have to make sure that if you're not born again, that you choose Jesus today uh, and let him save your soul. Let him, let it just, you, you submit unto the Lord, you submit unto the Lord and believe upon Jesus and what he did on the cross at Calvary and the, and the atoning work that was done on the cross at Calvary, that that would be sufficient for my sin issue. Amen. Has anybody ever came to you and just said, man, you got issues? You know, I mean, you got issues. So we got three and a couple out there. And it, when you got issues, really what our issue truly is is just a sin issue. I mean, we we got cute little names for it now in, in 2015 in the Western world. We, it's this and it's that. It's that. It, what, really what it boils down to is sin. It's, it's something as simple as sin, and the solution is Jesus. Just say his name, Jesus. <coughs> I was talking to a person in between service, and they were, uh, we were praying and we we're talking about some different situations. And I said, when you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. Just, you know, if you kind of get in, in, in gridlock and everything kind of locks up on you and you kind of forget everything that, that you've learned in Bible class and everything, just remember one thing is Jesus. Just, just remember his name and, ju- and you just say, who am I speaking to? You just say his name over and over again. You just you just keep repeating his name over and over again, and and then things start to flee, and the devil has to flee, and and good times are coming, and the bad leave. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can applaud the Lord if you want to. We're not in the library. Jesus says so. When when I come to church, I believe that God has given me another opportunity to become a little bit spiritually wise, 
And then when I read that it's in red letters, that's Jesus speaking to me. I really tune in my spirit because when Jesus speaks, I want to know what he's saying. Amen. He says, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Anytime you see bridegroom in the Bible, uh, depending on, on where it is, it's either God or Jesus. The bridegroom is God or Jesus, depending on how that is written. So these 10 virgins are, are coming with their lamps to go meet the bridegroom. That's, that's Jesus. And, and however you look at this, is Jesus coming back or, 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 or whatever? Uh, it says, so there's 10 of these virgins that come to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish. Do this. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. You ever notice that when you get a group of 10? Not, not everybody's as smart as you are. Sometimes there, there's a group of people that are unwise. We'll just call them unwise since we're in church. Amen? I, I don't know what you call them on a job site, but they're just, in the Bible, they're unwise. Amen? In, in a workplace. Or if you're working out in a factory or something, running a forklift, you might, you, I don't know if you say he's unwise or she's unwise. You, you may be hitting your horn just going, you're really unwise. Amen? <laughs> Did I talk to anybody yet? It, it, don't act like you ain't having fun here, because you are, praise God. They're cutting up in North County. So listen, so five were foolish and five were wise. Verse 3, it says, for, for when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. Amen. That's, that's what foolish cats do. They, they, they don't ever have everything that they need. They ever show up at your house, you know, like, like the, 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 foolish, the, the foolish people, they don't ever have, they're like, oh, you know, I forgot to bring that. And usually it's like their wallet or something. You're like, ah, got the wallet. <laughs> you ever met that guy? Oh, I'll get you next time. No, you won't. You forgot that last time. You're the foolish guy. Don't act like you ain't never went out to eat with him either. Or her. She's always at the bathroom when it's time to pay the tab. <laughs> get you on the next one. Come on. Who am I talking to now? This is what foolish people do. They just do this kind of stuff. Amen. And you might be in church, not this church, but you went to church with them before you got to hear it. They have Bible. You were with the, with the foolish folk. Listen to this. He says, he says, the foolish took their lamps. They took no oil with them. Oil in, in the Bible is always depicted as the Holy Ghost. Just say that. Just say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Okay. In verse 4 it says, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. So they were ready. If they ran out of oil, they would have more oil in reserve. Amen. And, and if you're born again, you'll never run out of Holy Ghost. You didn't get that, did you? If you're, if you're, it's not like you, you're riding your Harley on reserve or anything. If you're born again, you'll never run out of the Holy Ghost. You'll always have the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct you. That's a wise person. Say wise. wise. It says, as the bridegroom was delayed... They all became drowsy. So now this is Jesus coming back. And sometimes the church falls asleep, not on purpose, but because they just get tired and they, and they just get indoctrinated by religion, amen, so to speak, if you will. And, and they just get tired. And sometimes, quite frankly, they fall asleep on the job, amen. It's time for the, for the church to wake up. Say, wake up. wake up. Now look at your neighbor and say that, wake up. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and they slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. So here's Jesus. Come out to meet him. Then all of those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. This sounds like a pretty good idea, trim the lamps. So you have to remember the, the contents that it's written in. And, and back in the day, that, that light, actual light came from from oil lamps, so they, they trimmed the wick up so that the light uh, would be more, more prominent and it would be more direct and it would be more refined. So they were all up and they were trimming their wicks. Now, in the church sometimes, not this church, of course, but a lot of times they end up into, into just the wick trimming all the time. They're always trying to trim everything up and refine everything and do everything, and, but you'll find out that these foolish, these, these virgins didn't have any oil to keep the 
to keep the lamp lit. They didn't have any Holy Ghost. They, they see we could, Churches can get up and trim the wicks, and they can do all the improvements and do all the things, but if there's no Holy Ghost feeding that flame, the flame will die out. Amen. Amen. So that's just the way it is. And, and if there's no oil in there, if there's no Holy Ghost in there, you, you, you don't have a church. You can trim your wick all you want. You can have all the classes that you want. You can have all the, the prayer meetings that you want. But if you're not praying in the name of the Jesus uh, under, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you don't have anything other than just a, a bunch of folks sitting around playing church. Amen. So we have to make sure that we never extinguish the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm talking about opportunities today. And that's, what, and that's what this is. Back to the text. In verse 7, he says, Then they all rose and trimmed their lamps. And, the, and listen to this, what foolish one said. Number 8, it says, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. <laughs> you ever notice that? In, in, in people, when, when you have something and, and they haven't worked for it or they ain't got it, they always want they want, to, they want to just scream at it, hey give, hey, give me some of what you got. Hey, then what you need, if you want some of what I got, you need to submit unto the Lord if you want, if you want some oil. If you want, if you want your flask filled up, you need to be born again. Amen. If you want my joy and you want my new opportunities and all that, you've got to submit yourselves unto the Lord, and you'll get this, you'll get this oil that you need. But you ain't getting any of mine. Amen? Because Jesus died for me. See, it's all about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Because there ain't nothing I can give you except the message of God, and you have to receive that to yourself. Amen? And you can't go out and say, well, I, I wish I had what he had. Well, if you want what he had, you need to bow the way he needed, he, the way he bowed and the way she bowed. Did you hear that? And then, and then, that, and then that oil comes on you. And when the Holy Ghost, when, the, when you truly are baptized in the Holy Ghost, it, it, it's, like, it's, like getting, it's like being on the beach and just putting tanning oil all over you. It's a, the Holy Ghost is everywhere. And, and, and you got all the Holy Ghost that you need to accomplish all the things that you need to accomplish. That's what this picture is of. Can I read on? So here it is. Listen. Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Well, of course your lamp's going out. Of course your church is dying. Of course all these things are going away, because you've never invited the power of the Holy Ghost in your church or your life. Of course your flame is going to go out. You don't have nothing to fuel the fire. Amen. This is an opportunity, church. I want to I want to tell you that it's your job today to seize this opportunity and invite Jesus into your life so you can have that same anointing and that same oil that the Bible calls the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. But the wise answered saying saying since there will not be enough for us and and for you go rather to the dealer. Now he's talking about going to God. And buy for yourselves. Just look at your neighbor and say, buy for yourself. And, and, and watch this. Back to me now. And while they were going to buy, watch this. Look, look at verse 10. It says, and while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. Isn't that just like it? Right when you're getting your family lined up, you go, you missed it. You should have been at that church. Man, that was the best message I ever preached. Oh, I was, you know what I was doing? I was, I was, I was watching the paint dry. Sorry, man. Come on, don't act like you ain't got that family member. You've invited him to church over and over. And then the bridegroom shows up. You go, you missed it. You, you missed it. Oh, man, he was there. The Holy Ghost was there. You missed it. You getting it now? These are opportunities that can't be replaced. Hallelujah. The bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and then the door was shut. So once the, Reverend McCoskey, once the door is shut, it's, it's, it's over. It's game, set, and match. And when, once the, Mike, once the door shuts and God in the role is called up yonder and the door is shut, game's over. It's over. There is no more opportunity for anybody. There's no, there's no more. You don't get a second chance. Go, I wish I would have. Today's the day that you should have. Listen to this. We're going to close this up and we're going to move on here. Now watch. Listen to this. When the door was shut afterward, the virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, 
I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. He says, so I, I never knew you, so, so let's say, okay, you guys are all born again, and that's great, and the whole church is born again, and, and I, you know, I guess I can assume that. I'd be foolish if I did. And then you're in, and you're in the banquet feast, and you're there at the table with all the Bible characters and all the great Christians that you, you went to have Bible with or wherever you went. We're all celebrating, but outside, there's a knock on the door. This is your children trying to get in. You guys didn't hear me. Let me come over here. All right, the knock, it's your grandchildren or your, your neighbor trying to get in because you didn't invite them to church or you didn't tell them about the love of Jesus or you, or you met them in anger and stuff, and they're knocking outside the door, and, he, and, and Jesus is saying away from me, I never knew you. It's your job and my job to take this wonderful message of Christ and seize the opportunity today to tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. There will never be a day like today. We have to take that word and go ye, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Don't hide it. Take it out so everybody can be born again. Hallelujah. What a wonderful responsibility. I pray that somebody seizes that opportunity today. Amen. Second part of the message is, is in Matthew 25, 14, and I won't charge for this, but I want to give it to you anyways. It says, for... It will be like a man going on a journey, say opportunities, who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. To one he gave five talents, to two, or to another two, and to another one. So what God is doing is he's entrusting his property to people, to his church. And, and, and being as God is, is in the entrusting business to his, to his children, he starts out saying he's going to entrust this person with five talents. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a five-talent guy. I, I, I want you to be a five-talent woman. I, and then the next guy that he entrusts, he entrusts two talents to this guy. And then there's always the one bringing up the reef. He's the one-talent guy or the one-talent girl. She's always got some kind of problem. Can't really trust her with a whole lot. So you give her or him some, some big assignments like watch the car or watch the grass grow. <laughs> Amen. That's the kind of assignments one-talent people get. You know, I, I don't know if you've been a one-talent person all your life, but today's the day to be a five-talent person. You have an opportunity to be a five-talent person. Oh, man, this is so biblical. I want, you to, I want you to grab a hold of it. And you say, well, I would love to have what they have. That if you would love to have what they have, then do what they have done. Amen. Don't come in here and go, I wish I had what he had and, and not want to go through what he went through to get there. Be a five-talent person. Just make up your mind today is the opportunity. Well, I'm going to be a five-talent dude, amen, or a five-talent woman. I'm just going to be a five-talent person. So the story goes on. It's all about opportunity. So to each according to his ability, then he went away. He who received the five talents, he went away at once and traded. So the five talent guy does what five talent people always do. As soon as he gets an opportunity, bing, he's gone. Did you hear that? That was like a roadrunner. Bing, gone. <laughs> See, when the roadrunner needs to get to some place, he, he, he just goes, me, 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 he's gone. He don't, he don't call a church committee together and get the elders of the church to pray over him. He just goes, amen. That's a five-talent dude. He just, he just goes and gets it done, amen. Who am I speaking to today? Five-talent dudes do that stuff. You don't need to ask around to find out or text somebody. How about we'll text somebody to find out if I should be a five-talent guy? Amen. Come on. Amen. Uh. So, to one to each ability to receive five talents, he traded with him. Okay. Uh, so, the two talents, let's go to, uh, I'm sorry, go to 17. Listen to this. So, also, he had, who had two talents, made two talents more. But he who had received one talent, <laughs> what do you think the one talent guy is going to do? 
You've assigned him work before. <laughs> he ain't got to do nothing. You know when you accept. You go, I want you to do 10 push-ups and you leave the room. What do you think he did? He grabbed a Big Mac. <laughs> That's a one-talent guy. He's always going to do that. You, don't ex- you really don't expect him to do anything. You just assign it to him to try to make him feel good. And see if he's going to continually make the same stupid decisions. Well, he did. Amen. Listen to what the one talent guy does. Amen. You guys are thinking of some of your family members, but move on from that. Listen. <laughs> Verse 19, 25, 19, it says, but he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. I don't know. I, I don't know if any of you guys have dogs. Just raise your hand if you do. Just. If you have dogs, you get, this is what dogs do. Dogs dig in the ground and hide bones. And I, I, don't, I don't know the thought process behind this, but and then they end up going back and getting it like it's something new or something. They're like, oh, I got the bones here. <laughs> Am I making sense yet? It does to a dog, but it, it shouldn't to a human being. Now, I didn't say this to the other services, so you guys are getting bonus footage. Listen. So when the dog goes back to his bone, it's the same bone it was when he buried it. Now it's just got a bunch of dirt on it. <laughs> and you can act surprised like when you uncover go, hey, there's a bone, or hey, there's money. That's all it ever will be if you dig and hide it. It's what people do when they're, when they're afraid or they're, watch this, they're playing it safe. Get in a little closer. This is what the church has been doing for a long time, Reverend McCoskey. They, they've, been, they've been playing it safe. We're, we're going to keep it safe. We're just going to keep it safe. We're going we're gonna to lock the doors. If we got enough people, we're just going to play it safe. Because I know them, they know me, and we don't want anybody else in our church. That's how you play it safe. And that's, and that's what one talent folk do. They bury that stuff, and, and then they come and uncover it again, and they go, oh. the church needs to quit playing it safe. The, the church needs to get on fire and, and get some of the oil going. We're talking about opportunities today. Say opportunity. opportunity. Now, after a long time, the master of those whose servants came, settled the accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered me five talents. Here I have made what? Five talents more. That's what five-talent people do. They take the opportunity, and they double what the Lord has given them. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over what? Can I tell you about much? Say, please do. I love much. I love much Doritos. If I'm going to have a a little bag of Doritos, I just assume it'd be much Doritos. Amen? I'm just a much guy. Amen. Set me over much. Say that to the Lord. Say, set me over much. I want to be a five-talent guy. I want to take this opportunity, and I want you to set me over much. Um, Verse 22, and he also, who had two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over, say it with me. I will set you over much. I will set you over much. It's just set me over much. If I'm going to be here and I'm going to be taking up space, I'm going to be breathing God's air, I just assume he give me much, Smitty. Just give me much. Just give me, a, give me a big responsibility. Let me do a big work for you. Let me, let me do a big assignment for you. I want to get on fire for you. I want to I want, I want, I want preach to people. I want to, I want to love to people. Give me much. Give me much, people. Hallelujah. He says, enter into the joy of your master. Verse 24, he also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew. You ever notice that when... <laughs> Somebody did something wrong. They always want to. They want to. They want to say your name first before they start talking. Watch this. Tell me if this rings a bell. Daddy. I'll let you think about this with children. Grandpa. (laughs) 
hey, babe, baby doll. <laughs> that means you just bought a truck without her permission. Then when you, <laughs> you, you, you come in with the baby doll, you're coming, you, you done did it. <laughs> yeah, that's putting the butter on the biscuit, man. That's sugar and everything. <laughs> That's when you went overboard. That's when you bought your second Harley. And honey, <laughs> here it is. So this is what the guy's saying. This is the one talent guy. He says, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter no seed. So now all of a sudden he shows up with this, and he's apologizing before he starts a sentence. And then he starts lying about the very guy that was giving him an opportunity to get it right again. You ever notice that, that that somebody always is to blame if you're a one-talent person? They go, well, the reason I did it was, no, no, no. The reason you did it like that is because that's the way you always do it, and that's why you're a a one-talent person. We really don't expect much out of one-talent people, but we do out of five-talent people. And this church has got a bunch of five-talent folk in it. Amen. Applaud the Lord for that. Amen. Verse 25, he says, so I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. Verse 26, but his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. He considers people that are slothful very wicked. That means to be, that, that means to be twisted, and, and I'm going to have to ask God personally. I'll ask him for you if I get there before you. God, why did you create sloths? Why did you create that animal, the sloth? The sloth is the sloth moves. I, I don't know. It, it might move like four inches in the course of a day. And and I'm curious when I get to heaven, what God created a sloth for? Amen. I mean, you look at him and you see him hanging in the tree, and you see that he hasn't done much in the course of a day. You got to scratch your head and go, Why did you make him? Why did you make that sloth? He goes on, he says, verse 27, he says, Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was mine with own interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. So that five-talent guy just became a ten-talent guy, and he took the talent from the slothful person and now made the five-talent guy an eleven-talent guy. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't you like to be an eleven-talent guy? Opportunity. But it starts with five talents. And it starts with you responding properly at this opportunity today. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. Verse 29. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken. You ever see how somebody's world, one talent people, their world always seems to be reducing and reducing and getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller? It's because they're not following the word of God. Their whole world gets very small. Rise up with me real quick, if you would. Listen. I, I can't, I, you can't go until you hear this, and then you can leave after this. Listen to this. So this is all about opportunities, and this is the biggest one as of today, right now. This is a, the biggest one as of today. Listen to this. He says, and cast the worthless servant, this is the slothful one he's talking about, into the outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Sounds like a place I want to stay away from. Let me tell you about this place where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible depicts that place as a place called hell. And that's where people go that have never called on the name of Jesus. And it's a true place. And then at the end, hell gets thrown into the lake of fire. And let me tell you something about that lake of fire. It continually burns over and over and over, and it never quits. And all the people, see, God didn't design hell for human beings. He designed it for devils and demons. But those who have never called on the name of the Lord need to call on the name of the Lord today. Today is the opportunity for you to be born again. Today is the day that you give your life to Jesus. 
in this weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is where people are continually crying, trying to quench, quench their thirst and, and, and get the fire off of them. And people are, are crawling around and clawing around and, and, and running around trying to get some relief. And, and I believe, I heard this preach, and I'm going to say this today, and I believe all them people who are in the lake of fire and who are in hell, I believe the very first person that they're going to look for when they get to hell, you know who that is? They're going to look for the preacher. They're going to look for the preacher that never told them about hell. So today, I'm going to tell you about hell, and I'm going to tell you to stay away from it and choose Jesus today. Now, let me tell you something. How many opportunities will you get when you leave this service? Here's the deal. I have no idea. I, have no, I don't know how many more opportunities you got. But I know right now you have an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. And if you leave here today and you've never called on the name of the Lord, that's on you, not on me. Because I've delivered the message and I've given you the opportunity and you need to receive it as such. Now listen, as, as the praise team is playing here, I want you to listen to this for a second. Close your eyes and bow your head for just a second. Maybe you've never called on the name of the Lord. Maybe, maybe you've never trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to become a, a, a biblical opportunist. Maybe you want to receive Jesus right now. You say, I would love to receive Jesus and, and make sure that I'm, I, I'm away from that place of torment of where there's gnashing of teeth and eternal weeping and burning. I don't want to be in that place. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I, I know for sure I don't want to be in that place. Then you need to call on the name of the Lord. You just, you just raise your hand to God right now. Do it right now and just say, I want to be saved, God. I want you to, I want you to, to, to save my soul. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And, and on that old rugged cross at Calvary, he shed all his blood for my sin problem. And I realize that sin is offensive to God. It's all wrongdoing is the way it's depicted in the Bible. And today, if you're looking for an opportunity to repent or to be healed or to have joy back in your life, I pray that you move forward as, as, as the music is playing and you feel like you need to come out to the aisle and you need to come down. Just, just make your way gracefully just right down here to the to the feet of the cross just maybe you need you need god to touch your life you need someone to pray for you maybe you got a, a situation or addiction that you're battling maybe it's a a shortcoming that you need god to take care of take this opportunity and seize it in jesus name amen let's applaud the lord here today hallelujah amen